Hey everyone. So, as mentioned in my Pancakes Con talk, which if you haven't seen it, uh, that video is also up now. That was a just God, I love that event. Thank you, Leslie, everyone on their team, just terrific people. As mentioned in that talk, where I talk about safe locks and electronic safes and how a lot of people are moving away from electronic safes because of the manufacture of back doors. Oh, by the way, a uh, totally fun thing Sergeant Greenleaf. I was like searching, I was searching different. Uh, search strings about safe codes and unlock codes and reset codes, just trying to bulk up my little database of knowledge that I, we give to our students. And I was like, huh, that's interesting. There's a, there's a page that just says, I lost my combination. I was like, maybe there's a default override, something. Let's see what's going on here. And it was the Sergeant and Greenleaf website. I'm like, that's interesting. I've never, let, let's see what this is documenting. And yeah, it's literally like, you can see, I'm putting it on the screen. We do not keep your combinations. We will never have, as safe manufacturers, it is improper for us to ever have a back door. To... Like, this is such an about face. I actually had to check the Wayback Machine. I was like, this page hasn't been up for long. No, this is brand, brand new. As I mentioned in my PancakesCon talk, right around the same time that everything blew up on the internet when people talked about electronic safe locks and back doors. And a senator came calling. So Senator Wyden, I mentioned this in my presentation, Senator Wyden called them up. His office was like, hey, uh, what's your policy on reset codes and back doors and everything and administrative manufacturer codes? Sergeant and Greenleaf, which again, like their electronic locks, this is how they work. There is a manufacturer reset code. They were like, oh yeah, we have a special policy where we never divulge those things ever unless there's a warrant and a subpoena and law enforcement, you know, I'll go through all the proper channels. And like that policy did not exist before Senator Wyden's office was like, hey, what are y'all, what's your policy here? And like, likewise, this webpage did not exist, I think, until just a, maybe a week or so ago. But it is fun to see how the conversation is moving the needle. The public mindset is shifting. And that's why a lot of people are interested in reverting their safes, or I would just say reconfiguring their safes, replacing electronic locks with mechanical safe locks. And that's what this video is about. So as I've described, I've told this story elsewhere. A uh, very wonderful person named Derek reached out to me and they said, hey, you know, you've been talking about this electronic safe, this back door thing. I, I do not like that. I have an electronic safe that came, you know, electronic lock that came with my, my Liberty safe. If you're willing to, and you said, you, you know, we could work together, I'd, I'd love to swap that out. And I said, yeah, that's exactly what I want. You're not too far from me. Uh, you know, I'll buy you a lock at dealer price. I want to keep the electronic lock, obviously, for experimentation and demos. But I was like, yeah, if I can document how this process works, I want to show other people and they can lend in other, you all can do it yourselves. So yeah, if you have a safe with an electronic lock on it and you're not satisfied with the, what that security might be, maybe you want a mechanical lock. Maybe you watch the following quick little video and yeah, you might be inspired to make the change. It's not as hard as you might think. And we had a few hiccups. I talk about them in this, but it's something that if you look at it, you're like, huh, I could probably do that more power to you. So yes, Liberty Safe, uh, Derek, who has this, invited me down because the built-in electronic lock, we've, we've seen some of the reasons that these are a little, little sus, but we do have a couple of mechanical locks. I think you said you're going to go with a Group 2M? Yes. I nice. Know. So manipulation resistant, highly manipulation resistant Group 2 mechanical by Sergeant and Greenleaf. Let's talk about what it takes to swap it out. Yep. Now it's kind of fun if you were to relock it just out here while we're out here. Uh, so it just yeah. slams the Yeah. Thing. So this is called a relocker. If this back panel or cover gets knocked off for any reason, this is under spring pressure. It wants to fire downward. So we can even take off this little relocker panel. which we would have to do anyway. And so imagine that back cover were gone, that would slam down. And then if somebody were to try to come in and you know open the safe or even rip this out or knock this apart or torch it, who knows, you're trying to hit the bolt work, it's just gonna slam into this. So it's a, it's a secondary locking mechanism, which we should be able to adapt the new lock somehow to work with that. We'll figure it out. And in the meantime, we're going to get some screws out here. And this whole casement right here, 
This is a very standard footprint. It's actually called the Magic Module footprint. So we should be able to do a dead direct swap. This is the same bolt throw. It's going to be a straight throw bolt. But hopefully a couple of screws on this cover and we'll see how, we'll see how it's mounted. I'm just gonna keep the GIS bit in because who cares? Yeah, yeah, the, the long screwdriver there happens to be a GIS driver too. Now see this, these screws, these, these threadings, these are quarter by 20. Hmm. They are probably going right through to the mounting holes. Most lock cases would have short stubby screws that you'd be mounting the body of the lock casement into the door. But this is probably just holding the whole thing on. Yep. There we go. So that whole, and you could imagine that, that if somebody has access, this is all one unit, you could, in theory, from the front, try to smash it, or at least pro like bash it like this. And even if it were to do that. That's why you'd have that, exactly. So removing the lock casement proved shockingly simple. And then we just have a little header. That, oop, we got a little tabby boy. Up, down, which way do you go? There we go. All right. So there be that. To get to the battery right? Yeah. Um, it's I think it's just a twist. Want to try it? Yeah. If you crack the plastic, it's better than me cracking it. But yeah. it's... Um, it should just... Yeah. Oh, it's a front ring. Got it. Yeah. Makes sense. There we go. Well, thank you there. So we have plastic housing here. This is obviously a battery. battery swap if we wanted to. So normally a safe dial ring would be mounted with two screws about here and here. This might just be kind of, you know how you slip down? It might just be something like that. Yeah, it was. Oh there we go. Pop it straight up. It's just two little, two little pear shaped holes. We can pull that out of there. Damn. So there's our electronic safe parts. That's done. There, there's your mounting points for your, your dial ring, essentially. These are maybe going to be bigger screws than we need, but we have other options here. As the Hitchhiker's Guide says, always know where your towel is. It's not the dumbest idea. So like just throwing that down there so this door can't, literally, I know the bolt work is preventing it from closing right now, but just in case you have any kind of system where the, the bolt is a lot, you never know what could happen, but preventing the door from ever slamming shut, it's a good thing. This is, it's not the worst plan in the world to kind of just be a little extra cautious. Oh, neat. Okay, that explains why. Uh, I was like, boy, those look thick, but no, they're, they're regular, regular thread. So we've got our replacement safe lock. It is pretty straightforward. You have a lock case that should obviously be a very similar looking shape and size. And we have a dial and a dial ring inside of that oil cloth. So the electronic lock had complete through holes, at least in three of the four mounting positions. Um, obviously we don't have through holes. What we're gonna have to do is take the back cover off, which is meant to be removed, unlike the electronic one, which is not supposed to be serviced. And there we are. Now we have access to all four mounting holes and we can put her on and this will be mounted bolt down. So four mounting holes, this is going to drop right on here as the bolt would be normally extending downward like that. We have parts, including quarter by 20 screws. Oh, you even get a change key. We have our little spline key and a bushing there for the dial. Yay, that was our drive cam, which is not as bad a thing to have fallen out that you were like, oh, the safe's falling apart. That gets interfaced with the spindle that comes through from the mechanical dial. Gotcha. We're gonna go a little light on those screws for a moment yeah. until we center everything up. So that drive cam that happened to fall out as we were manipulating this, that is what the actual dial will thread into. So when you're manipulating the front of the lock, you, you are driving this drive cam around. And the reason that the spindle shaft is so humongous is because you could have a giant super thick safe door, a tiny safe door. We're going to chop off a lot of this once we get it installed. But to give the dial a place to go, we drop a dial ring on the front. Oh, this is neat. Yeah, this comes with a set of keys for your very bad wafer lock. If you want to, you know, even prevent your dial from spinning, you can lock it up. It has nothing to do with the locking the bolt work mechanics of the safe. That literally is to prevent kind of like nuisance operation of the safe. A curious kid. Exactly, exactly. So like before, 
we're going to go a little easy on these screws. What you want is just enough pressure that you can, you can literally, yeah, we, we have a little like Delrin mallet. We can kind of knock the dial ring around if we have to. So it's snug, but it's not dead locked on there. And of course you can go back later and really, really lock it tight. So we can still move this around as needed, but it's, it's going to stay relatively where it belongs. If your safe dial ever sounds like it's running like shit, it's because you did not put the bushing in place. Different models, different styles. This bushing literally snaps in right here. There we are. That'll, you can see that'll kind of move around, but only if you really give it a good thump. Mm -hmm. Which sometimes, if somebody is proceeding past the safe and they literally crash into it, it'll knock the dial ring, which will put pressure on the actual spindle. If your safe is ever running like shit, look straight down from above and be like, oh, I like freaking blasted my elbow into this thing, that's why. Because again, like a few taps with a hammer, get her lined up. So this should be now sticking out the other side. So this looks like a little weeble wobble, but once that drive cam settles into position, that'll be nice and snug from this side. And the drive cam has helpful markings. You see LH, RH, VD, VU. This has to do with the alignment of this little spline channel right here and where you ultimately want to punch the spline key in. It, it will make sure the zero point, the, the drop-in point, the sort of opening point of the safe dial is as close to zero as is reasonably can be expected. So that looks, that looks like a pretty good spot to be in. I'm just gonna mark that and then we can chop that off with a Dremel or a hacksaw or whatever you want. right past our silver is where we're chopping this off. Yeah, in a fight between the friction wheel and brass, we, the loser's gonna be brass pretty fast. Cool, yeah, that worked out pretty damn well. Now, if you're ever really worried uh, that you're gonna make a complete beast of that, you could put the drive cam on first so that you're actually backing it off past the threads to clean the threads back up. That's kind of a, a poor person's tap and die set. In this instance, we're pretty good. No real problems. Send it back through. I might have undercut it by an eighth of an inch or so, but there's, there's gonna be enough meat that there's no real problems. Just about flush. Yeah, you'd want it, I mean, it can be even a little, it can be a hair proud of the surface if you want. So this is going to be mounted vertical down. So let's get our spline channel over there. And normally if we pound our little uh, key in there, that should lock her together. Now I'm just checking if I wanna back it off by one rotation. That's a, little, that's a little nicer, that's a little less snug. It should be able to kind of naturally make the drive cam move on its own. Obviously it's gonna slip right now. We don't have the spline key in there. But when I had it one round tighter, you can see it, it barely wanted to move that. So if we bring it back around to about here, now we've got a little bit more in and out that I want. Let's bring it one more in. That, it'll be a little tight, but I mean, brass is self-lubricating. We'll give it a try, we'll give it a try. I think these are mounted flag out. Yeah, 90% sure. Again, should it matter? No, you'll get some really old safe techs with very strong opinions about this though. All right, we feel, we feel pretty good about that. We like that. Actually, I don't even, I could have checked what it was set to before. It, it might be set to 50-50-50 or it might be set to 50-25-50, it's probably not. Oh yeah, the, the wheels are all set to something together. I wonder, here, you know what? Let's actually see if I were to back it off. And I bring it around to about here. Interesting, they look like they're set to 40. That's weird, if I park this on 40. Yeah, they're, okay, the safe was set to 40? 
Now we also are interested in seeing if we can mount this on this way. So if the back cover will be going on here. Yeah, that looks like that's gonna work. Now wait a minute. Is that gonna, that's gonna block the change keyhole. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if that's a feature or a bug. Yay, done. So now we'll still be able to access our change keyhole. I, I just like that a lot more. Bring this up, press this in, and press that back. That should hold in place pretty well. There we go. And we're going to double check and triple check and test ourselves many times before anything could possibly go wrong. So without even, you know, basically again, like rule of three, uh, you do anything you're gonna do to a safe, combinations, changes, any kind of servicing, you test it three times before you ever close it. And then you even sometimes have the customer do it three times. <laughs> so what happened in the next maybe 20 minutes we were working on this, I would change the combination, Derek would try the combination, I was teaching him how to operate it, and we kept running into these weird problems where it would work a couple times and then it wouldn't and I'd go inside, it, oh, one digit has drifted, what's going on? Uh, these Group 2 M-Locks, they've been sitting on an inventory shelf for so long, probably a decade, the lubricant had just kind of seized. So off camera, I took the whole thing apart, I re-lubed it, I reassembled it. We had a stuck fly basically going on in there. Goes to show you, it does pay to know how to service a safe if you're in a situation like this. So now we have got ourselves a much better situation. Uh, this had been sitting for so long that it was gummed up. Literally, we had a stuck fly. That's what we were diagnosing. I was like, why is one wheel picking up when, when it shouldn't? Um, yeah, in fact, you can almost see See how, how loose these are right now? We are going to tighten up the wheel stiffness a little bit, just so they don't completely just wobble by themselves. They should stop when you stop. You don't want to have the wheels like overshoot. That feels a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot better. Bang. Nice. So that was a bit of a process. Yeah. I mean, especially with the, uh, just the hiccup with the lock system and not necessarily the installation. Yeah. What we discovered is that this lock had been sitting on an inventory shelf for so long that the lube had basically gone like solid and we had to take everything apart, literally pop the spiral locks washer, took all the wheel pack out, took the flies out, relubed everything, put it back together, even had to fiddle with the tension on the wheel pack. But now we've opened it successfully how many times? Three. Three times. We're going to give it one more to be safe. And then uh, thank you for letting me do this. <laughs> Absolutely. I hope uh, whatever tinkering with the electronic lock uh, goes well. Yes. Look for that later on. Thank you, Derek. There you go. Switching out an electronic safe lock for a mechanical safe dial instead. A lot of you out there might be watching this being like, man, that guy's no smarter than me. I could totally do that. You're probably right. If you looked at the video, it was, it was not a lot of difficulty. We, we ran into a couple hiccups. Mostly, I just had to make sure the lock was in good working order. But if you pick up a lock that is nice and brand new, probably never going to be a problem there. And if you, even if you're getting a used one, poke around on eBay. You'll find plenty of pretty cheap locks and do a quick service on it. Do a quick you know, tear down and, and lube it up. Again, I say, I say like this is quick, like you know what you're doing. If you've done any kind of safe lock training with us or other people, you know how to do that. But uh, it's, it's really not that challenging to get one of these locks either used or if you want to get a new one, I can throw some pricing up on the screen here, right? The official dealer pricing for group two locks, like the 6700 series, you know, kind of the 6730 is common or Lagarde makes the 3300. These are not that expensive. If you want a group two M, some dealers might have them in stock. But yeah, these are the prices, right? If you want to spend $70, $75, a, a dealer might quote you $150, $160 on those locks. You could install it yourself, in theory. The process of setting the combination is pretty well documented. Um, you know, I'll, I'll try to link a video down below. There's plenty of videos about that online. But the actual swap out, it's just a few screws and a little bit of know-how. 
So maybe this helps you out. Maybe this was a video you're going to be inspired to do something on your own. If you do, if you break something, it is not my fault. You do this, you know, use this knowledge at your own risk. But as you saw right on the, on the, on the clip, right, we tested the safe over and over and over until we were sure it was working reliably and properly. And then we were just ready to go. I, I have faith in you. If you do it, you're going to be all right. Keep your guns secure. Keep yourselves secure. Keep your community secure. We protect us, right? Stay safe out there.